It's been a few weeks since a video was made for this project, so here's an update. Lots of little things. It didn't seem necessary to film me fumbling through the minutia, so here is the after it's been done video. The big picture goal is to get it running, which I figure is going to take about three months. It still needs a radiator, fuel tank, ECU, and wiring, so yeah, three years. I mean months. Using a stacked row transmission cooler I already had for another project. I bought a 9 inch fan, made some brackets, and mounted it up. It will get an inline thermal switch to make it twirl around. The compact breather was mounted low, so when I roll it over on its lid, because that's what Corvairs do, the oil doesn't drain out. Now I know what you're thinking, those puny half inch lines are too small, which will result in oil getting deposited in the catch can. And you may be right. But there's just not enough room to have anything bigger than a Dash 8 bung on the valve cover. The 4-speed auto transmission is a 4T80 out of a mid-90s front-wheel drive Cadillac DeVille. I'm still not sure if I want the CPU to shift it or just convert it to a manual valve body. I just don't have all the information to make that decision. Moving on to the inside of the car, where the kids normally sit, the fuel items are being mounted. Dash 8 feed and Dash 6 return. It's a little hard to see, but this is the fuel regulator and ethanol sensor. That is the fuel line bridge. More on that in a minute. The nice thing about using stock exhaust manifolds is that the OME heat shields can be reused. Here's one of the 45 millimeter waste gates. There's two of them and the Dash 8 feed line Y adapter mounted to the IC. Time to talk about the elephant in the room, that big gnarly pipe. Well, what that is, is the cold air intake tube. I didn't want any goofy air scoops or gills on the side of the car drawn air, so I figure I can pick up somewhat cooler air from underneath the car. Once the UPS man brings my air filter, I'll work on how to mount and service it. So back to this fuel line bridge. Surely I have too much time on my hands to make something like that. I could tell you what its purpose is, but what's the fun in that? Go ahead, tell me in the comments what do you think it's for. The only hint I will give you is that it's pretty securely fastened down. Concerning rear brakes, or brakes in general, I like to use hardline wherever possible. It makes for a firmer pedal. Some people use a flex line from the calipers so it can be removed without disconnecting the line. But removing the caliper shouldn't be necessary very often. A quick cap and bleed is all you need. GM cars of this vintage mostly used quarter inch brake lines, probably because they use drum brakes which require more fluid volume. But I prefer to use 3 16 inch line, especially when using disc brakes. I extensively use steel AN fittings throughout except when converting to original equipment. This last little bit is the Dash 12 Turbo Oil Drain Return Line. It's not an awesome angle to drain, you know, proper, but hopefully it's good enough. The last thing I'll say about the air intake tube is that this protrusion on the throttle body was in the way. I thought about cutting it off, but figured I might need it for something. To get the tube down as low as possible, I decided to indent the tube. I could have smashed it down, but that's rather hacky. I used a round flat plate and a special tool to make the indent. The tool comes in assorted sizes. This one was 2 and 5 sixteenths. Now for an important message. We've come to the grand finale. The stuff you have been waiting for and probably the reason you are even here. Replacing rusted floorboards. Yes, someone has to do it, and my wife said she's not interested. So I bought this stripper from Eastwood called the Blaster Max, or Super Stripper Pro or something like that, thinking it might be useful, but a stiff wire wheel on a side grinder works better for what I'm doing here anyway. If you're looking for the right way to replace rusty panels, this video isn't for you. There are videos showing people butt welding the pieces in and grinding them smooth so you can't even tell the panel was replaced. 
Mine are lap welded and will get seam sealer. Once a thick turquoise shag carpet lays on top, you'll never know the panels were replaced. Two hours later, which means two days in fabrication speak, the floorboards are done. Last point of business for today. What to do with this front end? I mean, it's not terrible. 40, 50 years ago, hot riders used to transplant them into their street rods. The biggest problem is that they use a steering box and a swing set tie rod assembly. I want a manual rack and it really doesn't lend itself to this front end. I'm not saying that it hasn't been done, but that it isn't elegant and is prone to have bump steer. So any day now, the UPS man is going to bring me a big box with a Chassis Works double A arm front end assembly. <laughs> it's going to be a really big show as it's grafted in. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.